Royal St. George's on the Kent coast can display the schizophrenia of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. As Jekyll is quite beautiful, lark song, wildflowers, and the sun glinting on Pegwell Bay. And even during a championship, it has elegance. The ascot of golf. Well, tell that to the golfers. In the 114th Open, they meet only Mr. Hyde. The championship indeed will be a test as severe as the Open has known for 10 years or more. And only in comparative calms between the rough stuff will a man hope to score low. And the sensation of the first day, Christy O'Connor Jr. from Ireland. 36 years old, he had seven birdies in a row this morning, and that's an open record. Second shot to the 18th. Beautiful touch. Is it going to be another birdie? Well, O'Connor was out in a remarkable 30, and the computers, which monitor this entire championship, tell us that he's now had 10 birdies altogether, and in fact, he's six under par. So he has this for a 63. What? And for once, it doesn't go in, but that's assuredly a four. And it goes, and it is indeed a 64. A remarkable round of breaks the Royal St George's course record of 65, first set by Henry Cotton way back in 1934. But more important, it means that O'Connor leads the Open Championship at the end of this first round by four strokes. In the second round, O'Connor has a 76, six over par. It's not Ireland's day, it's Scotland's, England's and Australia's. David Graham from Australia, former winner of the US Open and PGA titles, now at the 18th, his third shot. Has he given it enough? No, not quite. So still a bit to do, but he's going to get his par four. He's one under at the moment. Graham, one of the world's steeliest competitors. This for a 71. And he's judged it beautifully. A 71 it is, and he finishes one under par for the first two rounds of the championship. Graham then leads the championship. 45 minutes later, he's followed to this final hole by the English-based Scot, Sandy Lyle. And he has this putt to overtake David Graham. Oh, desperately unlucky, just overborrowed. But he'll tap in for a par four, and Lyle's challenge follows precisely that of David Graham's. But they both had 68 yesterday, they both have had 71s today, they're both one under par for 36 holes, and at the halfway stage, these two lead the championship. This championship, with the strongest international entry of the year, was viewed in advance as a contest between Europe, the upsurge in world golf, and America, so long dominant. And America, represented here at Sandwich, despite a few absent friends, by eight of her top 20 money winners, plus other notables. Not least Lee Trevino, US PGA champion. Yet the championship at halfway has developed in ways unpredictable two days ago. For Europe, Seve by Asteros, the champion and favorite is nine over par. For the States, Jack Nicholas, 12 over, fails to make the cut for the first time ever. Bill Rogers, champion here in 1981, goes out as well. 17 over par. By tomorrow night, Craig Stadler and Lanny Watkins will be eliminated too. And meanwhile, even Tom Watts struggles. The five times champion stands at five over. And the only American in the top 12 is D.A. Wybring, equal third. The possibilities are endless. As we await the third round, this open is wide open. Saturday, July the 20th. The wind fresh from the southwest and the storm clouds gathering. And at the par four fourth hole, we find Bernhard Langer from West Germany, winner of the US Masters and the only one of the pre-tournament favorites currently in close contention. 
played brilliantly in the worst of the weather yesterday to score a 69. He's birded one hole already today, so now he's level par and only one off the lead. Second shot from quite heavy rough. Up and lands short. Now, will it climb the bank? No, it won't. This hole is playing very difficult indeed. 470 yards and, uh, well, the forecast was so strong, wind against, that the tee's been brought forward, but it's still causing problems. Just look at the tilt on this putt. Up the hill it comes. Now it's got to turn. Has he got the pace right? Well, he certainly judged that very well indeed. And as Langer strides up the hill, the weather begins to look very ominous indeed. This for his par four. Well done, and he remains level par. And Langer is really looking quite a threat now. As we go back to the first hole, and the joint leaders go out. David Graham of Australia and Sandy Lyle of Scotland. Winter draws on as Graham plays his second shot to this par four, 445 yards. Six iron for Graham. The wind hard from the right. Graham starts it down that side. And it kicks towards the hole, and that's just the sort of opening iron shot anyone would have loved to have had on the first hole. Chance for a three. Now with a longer drive, Sandy Lyle. Lyle born in Shropshire, but of very Scottish parenthood, represents Scotland. And not a bad shot from Sandy, safely onto the green. These two players tied. Anxious spectators look on, hoping that Sandy will start with a nice putt. And that's just the sort of opening putt that Sandy doesn't mind at all. It would have been nicer had it dropped, but that's a comforting fall. Stays one under. Now David Graham has this putt from short range for a birdie three and to take the lead. <laughs> a three for David Graham and he leads the championship. And now Stygian skies cloak sandwich. A storm is imminent. For nearly an hour, golfers and spectators wait. Then the skies lighten and the third round resumes. And at the difficult eighth hole, a young man who's been there or thereabouts all three days so far, from Zimbabwe, Tony Johnston. He's one over par, second shot on this 415 yard par four. Beautifully played. And that merely serves to emphasise that a whole host of players from many nationalities are in with a shout in this championship. It could be Johnston from Zimbabwe. It might be D.A. Wybring, the American, or indeed many others. Who knows, it might be Christy O'Connor from Ireland. Struggling a bit, perhaps. Third shot on this par five, seventh hole. One of the most awkward ones in golf, the 30, 35 yard bunker shot. Oh, and they don't come much better than that. But over the outward nine, Langer and Graham are the only close contenders to advance significantly. Both gain two strokes against par. Wybring drops back, so does Johnson. Johnson indeed treble bogeys the ninth with a seven. And as the turn arrives, Lyle also falls from grace. The Scot, having bogeyed the eighth, bogeys the tenth and eleventh as well. And now that's the position as Langer comes to the short sixteenth. 
165 yards of par 3, and at the moment the wind here not too bad, and you can see the flag tucked away on the player's left. Langer's tee shot, it's a 5-iron. And he tears into that, and that's right at the flag. Could end up being very close, and indeed it is. Pulls up a little short, but there's an obvious chance for a birdie too. Langer just two off the lead, and this putt here has quite a bit of borrow from left to right. Well done, well done indeed. And that birdie too faces Bernard Langer now just one stroke behind David Graham, who's playing the 14th. Long par five, almost directly into the wind, 508 yards. He's just over the canal in two with a drive and a three iron. So Graham thinks it's a hard seven. Or does he? He's playing a long way. Yeah, sure is. Playing about 140 yards, huh? At least. Huh? But look how far down the grip he's holding. Oh, good. Punches that six iron, 140 yards. That's all he's got to go. Wide. <laughs> Signals are wide. Just shows you the power of the wind. Now, Sandy Lau playing with him. One over par. Graham is three under and leading by one stroke from Bernard Langer, who's now at the 17th hole. You see him over there? Yes, thank you very much. Three iron at this very demanding par four of 425 yards. Big step in front of the green. And Langer negotiates it quite majestically. And he's continuing to threaten David Graham. He's got two putts for his par here at the 14th. Wonders that awkward distance past. Very difficult to putt under these conditions with the wind buffeting you. But he safely does it, and he stays three under par. And up at the 17th, Langer with a chance to tie for the lead. Langer, who's made himself into a great putter, keeps reverting between the cross-handed and conventional grips. That's the third time on this inward nine that he's just missed very holdable putts. And so he'll remain one behind David Graham. And Graham at the 15th. Second shot with a six iron. Big straight. Big straight. Come on down. Past the flag. You get some idea of the, the many contours on this, the very difficult 15th green. Be all right. Got a good kick. Good kick, in off the bank. Come on, David. Oh, well short. And the rain certainly has slowed up many of these greens. Now this for his par. Yeah. And the par it is. I can't get the speed through, they're so slow. And meanwhile, up at the final hole, Langer. Struggling a bit here, missed the fairway with his tee shot, short in two. Now he has this for his par four. So near and yet so far, and that's a bogey five for Langer. A fine round of 68, that's two under par for the day, following his 69 yesterday, and one under par overall.
So Graham leading by two again as he comes to the short 16th. It's only 165 yards and a five iron. Nice smooth looking swing. Is it on target? Pitch is short, a little bit of good fortune there for David Graham. But first to putt will be his playing partner, Sandy Lyle. Still one over and four strokes off the lead. A lot of subtle borrows here. But Lyle looks as if he's judged that beautifully. And that's almost a certain par three for him. Now David Graham. He's been short several times since the raid. And he's given that one a bit of a dig. But he's pretty deadly from short range. I say. That's the first short putt he's missed in this championship. It's a bogey four. And again, he's only one stroke ahead of Bernard Langer, who's safely tucked up in the clubhouse. And O'Connor there sharing third place with Lyle. And many who thought after that opening day 64 that O'Connor would gradually fall away. Well, how wrong they've been. But here at the 18th, fighting to save his par. And that's a well-played bunker shot, albeit a touch bold, but he's still got a putt for a one-over par round of 71. Can he do it? No, he can't. A rather weary willy one. And this tough finishing hole claims yet another victim. That's a 72 for Christie and a two-over par total for the three rounds. And now out on the course at the 17th, just the final pair remain. David Graham, second shot, three iron. Very formidable hole, this 17th, with a big step in front of the green. Do you carry it up or do you pitch it short and chase it? Will it come? No, it won't. And that's a very awkward putt or chip up the bank from there. Sandy Lyle also struggling a bit on this hole. Graham it is with his third shot. And a pretty good effort. But he doesn't care for it because he probably is still thinking of that missed putt on the last hole. Two in a row. Oh dear, oh dear. And with Lyle also about to take five, the Open is now tied with one hole of this third round left to play. And Langer becomes the favourite to lead outright at the day's end, because this 18th is playing as the toughest hole in the links. 47 golfers have bogeyed or worse. But this third day will have an ironic twist in its tail. Long iron. Here's the kick. Up to this final green from David Graham and ends up in the shadows. Pretty good. Against expectations, Graham will par this hole. So will Lyle. But it's been a long day. The afternoon storm has prolonged round three well into the evening. And those finishing pars decree that it ends like this. Graham and Langer, three strokes clear of the field and 15 players within six strokes. The final day, and again this stiff southwesterly. And before the leading contenders go out, some consolation prizes to applaud. Piggybacked by Nick Faldo, Britain's Philip Parkin, with a damaged shin but a 68 as good as anyone today. 
1983, he was amateur champion. Today, Jose Maria Olazabal from Spain, who succeeded him, also takes the spotlight. Another good-looking swing. And who knows, this young man might beat his more famous compatriot, Semi Ballesteros, before the end of the day. To Olathebal, 19 years old, will go the silver medal as leading amateur here at Sandwich. While elsewhere in the links, some notable failures are confirmed. Ballesteros, of the 73, finishes 12 over and equal 39th. Tom Watson is 77. That means 14 over, which squeezes him into the top 50. Well, the leaders haven't gone out yet, but already one significant development from this man, Jose Rivero. Another fine player from Spain, his third shot to the par 5-7. Rivero started the day at six over par, but would you believe it, he's birded three of the first five holes, and can he get another one here? So, four birdies in seven holes, and Rivera's now two over, and only three strokes off the lead. So Spain augments the internationalism of the main contending pairs. In playing order, Peter Jacobson and Tom Kite, both American, they are four strokes off the lead. Next, Sandy Lyle, Scots, with O'Connor, Irish. And Ian Woosnam was Welsh, with Mark O'Meara, another American. These two pairs are three behind the joint leaders. Graham, Australian, and Langer, West German. So off go the leaders at the first, where just now Sandy Lyle came to grief. Got a bogey five straight away, so now it's three over par. And David Graham, also in trouble. Pushed his tee shot into heavy rough down the right-hand side. The wind's from the right, the flag's on the right. An awkward shot. Out it sails and... bounces over the hill and still in a bit of trouble. Not making the most confident of starts. Now Bernard Langer's second shot. Looks to be a seven iron. And no backspin over and down the back. And the club too many, I feel. You'd hardly think it was summer, the way the crowds are wrapped up against this chilly breeze. Langer watches. Graham pitches. And a very good shot that perhaps stopped, well, almost pin high. Now Langer with the most awkward of little shots. He's run up against the first cut of the rough I think hands forward, little seven iron stab. There, up the bank it comes. <coughs> oh, and that's an excellent shot from an awkward little situation. David Graham now birded this hole yesterday. Can he hold a longish putt for his par today? Lucky, just perhaps a shade too hard, and spun out. A bogey five for David Graham, and straight away he's back to level par. Now Langer with one of these little testy putts, this time the reverse grip. And he too hits his putt too hard. Straight away. They're now only two ahead of the field. Among those at two over now are Tom Kite, who birded the third, and Jose Rivero, who reached the turn in 31. Indeed, we've just heard that Fuzzy Zeller also has gone two over. And now here at the fourth, it's Ian Woosnam from Wales. 
and he's three over. This hole back to its full length today, 470 yards. A chip and a putt for his par four. <laughs> Eliminates the putting, so he also gets back to just two over par. And he and Mark Amira clear the green and make way for Langer and Graham. Both still level par. Langer's second. One iron. And finds the bank. Much will depend on the bounce and the lie. Three iron. And will it come up the bank? Pitches in the hollow? No. So the leader's still struggling, and Kite, the American, still pressing. Birdie the third, birdie the sixth. Second shot at the par five, seventh. A three iron. And a beautifully played shot from Kite. Certainly a chance of a birdie, and who knows, perhaps even an eagle. While back at the fourth, the leaders are fighting to save their par fours. David Graham, from below the bank, took a putter and came up woefully short. Reach, reach. And that's another stroke gone, a one over par five. Now Langer for his par four. No, always left, so both bogey again. Twice in the first four holes, and one over pass. Now, Tom Kite's putt for an eagle three at the seventh. Not to be, that would really have stirred things up had that gone in. as Peter Jacobson, his companion, watches, has this to take the lead. Yeah! A birdie four. And would you believe it, Tom Kite, who was four strokes behind just seven holes ago, now leads the championship. American euphoria is tempered by the knowledge that of the holes at Royal St George's, that par five seventh plays easiest of all this week, and the others have it to come. But when Kite approaches the turn, having parred the eighth, pars the ninth as well to be out in 32, then hears that Graham and Langer are bogeyed yet again at the fifth, well, that's a different matter. He's two strokes ahead. At that fallible seventh, where every contender except Woosam and O'Meara has birded, Langer, Langer can only make par. Graham, more predictably, gets his first birdie of the day. So again, Kite leads by a single stroke but on merit. And this is the par four tenth, and Kite, in a little bit of trouble, pulled his second shot way down there, and not the easiest of little pitches up to this green. The lie could be a little bit bare, the view could be a bit impeded, the nerves are a little bit raw. Can I float it up? Now that was very nearly a superb pitch. Now it looks as if it might be disaster. Fourth shot. And he thinned it up through the green too much. Up and out too strong and through the crowd and over the other side. Oh, this is beginning to look rather sad now, and the pitch back from this side of the green with the wind howling behind him is even more difficult. And he 
he's played a little gem of a shot. Now this for a double bogey six. Bravely holds, but what a dramatic swing that hole was. Minutes ago, he was leading by two, and now he's tied for second, one behind David Graham. And a new name there on the leaderboard, Payne Stewart from Florida in the United States. Plus twos are his trademark, plus three his score. Second shot to the final hole. And just to the back of the green, and nestles in a bit of nasty stuff. Not all that far from the hole. Well, just now it was Fuzzy Zeller who was threatening to do something rather special. Now, it's Payne Stewart. He'll only be two over par if this goes in. And looks terrific. Ah, oh, just ran out of steam. But that's safe enough for a par four on a round of 68, which equals the score done earlier by Jose Rivero. That gives him a total of 283. Three over par, which is one better than Rivero. Zella faded away, a 71 today to finish six over par. But Payne Stewart, safe and sound, the leader in the clubhouse. And with the others just coming to those windy, wild, testing finishing holes, well, you never know. O'Connor now second on his own. Sandy Lau dropped a stroke at the first, but got it back at the seventh, but he's just bogeyed the 13th to go back to three over par. Almost on the edge of this 14th green in three, so two putts for his par five. Long way away and putting into a strong wind. All of 18 yards. Oh, a great effort. And just when we all thought he might be dropping out of it, a birdie four for Lyle puts him just two over par. Now O'Connor for his par five. Yes, well done. He stays two over, and he and Lyle are now both only one stroke behind David Graham. And that's what the home crowd think about it as they see the scores posted at the 18th green. And those cheers reach out to the 14th, where Lyle and O'Connor have made way for the young American player, Mark O'Meara. Three over par and fifth on the US money list. Not bad at all, and a reminder perhaps that any one of, well, at least ten golfers could still win this championship. All British eyes now, of course, on Sandy Lyle. This 15th hole, a very testing par four of 467 yards, wind slightly across, and Lyle, slightly undecided, changes his mind and goes to a six iron. Cross bunkers, bank on the left, tilted green. Oh, lovely stroke, just comes off that front slope and gives Sandy a very holeable putt. Now, O'Connor's third. An awkward shot across the slope. Can he use the bank to work the ball close to the hole? Lobs it on the top and down it comes. And well, unlucky. He must have been looking for a bit more run from there and didn't get it. Now Sandy Lau with perhaps the most significant and important single shot of his golfing career so far. Wonderful stuff from Sandy Lyle, his second birdie in a row, and is now tied for the lead. Now, 
O'Connor for his par four. And no, whoa, tragedy indeed. He's played so well all week. He's kept everything going quite splendidly, but that miss could turn out to be crucial. He drops to three over, but Lyle at one over is now tied for the lead with David Graham. Graham playing the 14th, third shot to this par five. Punches it forward, head came up a fraction early, probably disturbed by that gusting wind. Not as near as he would have liked. And we go forward to the 18th, where Tom Kite's about to finish up his round. And oh, hello, we've got a streaker. Here's Jacobson into the tackle, lays him low. Well done, Jacobson, a healthy round of applause for him. Some of the crowd think it's highly amusing, but for the rest of us, well, I think it's rather sad without being too pedantic, and I hope uh, he and his like never make another appearance at one of our Open Championships. No, Tom Kite, one-time leader, but now four over, has this for his par four at the 18th and a total of 284. No, slides by. He's yet to win a major championship, although he's won potfuls of dollars. That's in for a 285, 72 today. And what might have been. Peter Jacobson, 73 today, 286, never really in it, but a hero, if for nothing more than that splendid 18th green tackle. And out on the course, the championship still tied. Lyle coming up the 17th. David Graham driving at the 15th. And that's going right. There's bunkers up there. Sandy Lyle, second shot just short of the 17th. You can see he's using a putter. Anxious eyes. Not easy to get this one stone dead. Pretty good effort from there, so Sandy with a four-footer for a par at the 17th, and David Graham in trouble at the 15th. He can only get it up the fairway some 80 yards. Time and shots running out. Third shot. Neat little hand and arm, pitch thrown high up at the pin. Oh. And a good effort. And all is not yet lost. Meantime, Langer, after a disastrous outward nine of 39, he's still only three over par. On here in two. Yes, it's there, and that's his first birdie of the day, and he also is now suddenly threatening Mr. Graham. Remarkable player, Langer, never gives up. But neither does this man. No. So a bogey for Graham at the 15th. And at the 17th, a par for Lyle. And what a moment. For as Lyle strides across to the 18th tee, the final hole, he leads the Open Championship by a single stroke. Could he possibly become the first British player to win our championship for 16 years? Graham within a stroke. So is Langer, and they're playing the short 16. Not so short today, the wind has changed. It's a full-blooded four iron. A lot of room to the left of the pin. But that's going on the wind. 
and dives into the bunker, and that could be plugged. <laughs> Graham also a four iron. Trying to keep it down and drive it forward, and that's also wandering away to the right. And just trickles into the sand. Lang has struck the ball beautifully on the first nine holes, particularly, but he couldn't get anywhere near with the putts. Meanwhile, at the 18th, what a moment. Sandy Lau coming right into the pin, which is centrally placed. Six iron. Pulled it a bit. And down the slope. Will it miss the thick rough? Well, it missed some of it, but leaves him a tricky little chip back. What an amazing reception. It's not over yet, of course, but Sandy Lyle, at the age of 27, could, just could, become our first champion since 1969, Tony Jacklin's great year. And the first Scottish winner for, well, it must be at least more than 50 years. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the 16th, David Graham's second shot, lying cleanly, not a lot of green to use and land on. Oh, very well played, but just not enough backspin. Dropped a stroke at the last. Now Langer found a horrid place. He's plugged in right down in the sand. Look at that. Tries to get it in the bank and chase it up the hill. No hope of getting it close. And up at the 72nd, the final hole, the third shot of Sandy Lyle. Now he's elected to play his most lofted club here. I'm not sure that's the right one. He must keep the hands forward. The ball must come out low and run into that bank. Got the club under the ball a bit, and it's not going to make it. Oh, all the way back it comes. Will it roll off the green? Surely not. Oh, dear, dear, dear. This isn't the easiest spot to get down in two from. Four shots from right up the hill, a bold one. Beautifully done, and that's four. He marks, and O'Connor now lines up his putt for a par four. Four over par. <laughs> and Christie loves it, and why not? A round of 72 today, and a four over par, total of 284. And what a moment for Sandy Lyle. Yeah. And there it is. A par 70, a total of 282, that's two over par. He played the finishing five tough holes in one under par. And now he can only go in and wait and wonder what the others are going to do. Back at the 16th, both Langer and Graham have long putts to salvage their pars. Now, a great effort. But it slides by. Langer marks, now Graham. Must get this. No, he doesn't. So two bogeys there to follow Lyle's bogey at the 18th, and Lyle clings on to his slender lead. The American, O'Meara, in the penultimate pairing, 
Now comes to the final hole. He finishes in 72 for 284, which is four over par. Woosnam, after an unhappy day, 75 for seven over. But to a crowd predominantly British, these matters are almost incidental and an intrusion on the main plot. Only Langer and Graham, now alone on the links, can thwart Lyle. One birdie from the last two holes will mean a tie. Well, at the 17th, there are no birdies, only pars. So the scenario for the final act is beautifully simple. To force a playoff, one or both must get a birdie three at the last hole. Now, Langer must hit the fairway with his tee shot. If he's going to have any real chance of getting a three. And he's done just that. Three to tie. Oh, he whips the hands in a bit early, blocks it a touch, could be off the fairway. Only just, but trouble. All this time, Lyle waits behind the scenes. His supporters find solace in the fact that this hole still plays most difficult of all. A birdie, then, is surely unlikely. Or is it? It's asking an awful lot to get down in two from here. And away it goes, nestles in that thick, rough back of the green. a little bit away to the right. He was in this bunker earlier in the week and he's in it again. 140,000 people and more have been here this week. The total prize money, 530,000 pounds. With 65,000 pounds to the winner. Great cheers for Langer, the US Masters champion, and also David Graham, former US and PGA champion. They both must hold to force a playoff. No, not enough. So Graham can't win. Now Langer, the same applies for him. One of the best chippers of the ball in the business. But this to tie. shaves the hole and it means that in fact we are to see a historic British victory just the final strokes for their pars this to finish equal second no that's away that's a stroke drop to bogey five and a round of 75 for David Graham a total of 284 four over par Now Langer is also for his four. This to finish in a tie for second place with Payne Stewart. So he too has a round of 75 for a four over total as well. And would you believe it, both Langer and Graham who both looked for long, long spells as if they might win the championship, in the end, share third place with Marco Mira, Christy O'Connor and Jose Rivero. And let a somewhat surprised Payne Stewart finish as runner-up. O'Connor takes the traditional Garrard silver scorecard for his 64, the lowest round of the championship. But everything overshadowed, of course, by the splendid victory of Sandy Lyle. A victory now celebrated by his wife Christine and their small son, Stewart. Was it really 16 years ago that Tony Jacklin last won for Britain? Yes, it must have been. Because that day Sandy Lyle was in the crowd and he was 11. I almost caught his golf ball, by the way. It has been a great thrill to catch his golf ball, but I've dismissed it by a few feet. I got that sort of gut feeling about 
this is the thing I want to do when I get older, to play golf, be professional, be successful. So I wanted to be the Open Champion. That was my main ambition. Here I am, several years later, and it's very nerve-wracking. I don't know if people watching from the outside, I might not look like I'm nervous, but I can tell you now that my stomach was in knots. A big stepping stone for me. The 114th Open, won in over par for the first time in 17 years, the championship that brought the old trophy back home. The winner of the gold medal and the, and the champion, champion of the year with a, with a score of 282, 282 Sandy Lyle. The championship which proved that nice guys don't always finish second. <laughs>